at the end of the day, look yourself in the mirror and say, did I get better today? And did I make my team better today? What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse-bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 100 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and we are already making plans to go back to China Mama. Next, we're going to talk about ways to fund your child's athletic pursuits. And finally, since this is our very significant and exciting 100th episode, we're happy to invite a special guest, Coach Fran Flory of the Las Vegas Thrill Women's Professional Volleyball Team to join us. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant we hope will become your new favorite. And this week, we're sharing one that was recommended to us by a Clark County Credit Union employee. The restaurant is China Mama, located in Chinatown off of Spring Mountain and Arville. This is actually China Mama 2, so make sure you're going to the right one when you're looking it up um, on Yelp or online to come. So when you go, the inside is beautiful. It really, it's very spacious. It has plenty of tables, but it, you can tell it's very busy and popular, but just like a really open air, like tall ceilings, mm. cool decorations. I don't know. It's not your neighborhood Chinese restaurant. It's just okay. a little bit more elevated. So we also had a reservation, just putting that out there that you most likely will need one, especially during like the lunch or dinner rush. And when uh, I went, we wanted to try a little bit of everything. So we asked our server for recommendations and he was lovely, by the way. He just like, I don't know, just a very nice, cool, calm guy. He was just like telling us all the details and um, recommending. So he said to get the crispy beef and the orange chicken. And I usually would probably shy away from those because those seem just like, oh, everyone, I don't know. Everybody gets orange right, chicken. Exactly. Yeah. I've but never had crispy beef, though. Crispy What's beef, that? yeah. So the crispy beef was like really small pieces of beef cut up and then almost like... They're not battered, but somehow just the seasoning like attached to it. I can't explain it. But then, yeah, they're like, it's not crispy. It's not, it's more chewy. I don't know how to describe okay. it, but it's small pieces. Hmm. And yeah, very, very flavorful, very good. And then the orange chicken, it had this amazingly fresh, light, bright sauce on it that had pieces of like, you've seen like orange peel chicken. It was like, yeah. that has like pieces of the orange peel really finely um, sliced in there. And it just was so good. It tasted very fresh. It was delicious. I mm. would get that like immediately right now again. And so we also got veggie egg rolls, chow mein with chicken and shrimp. And we just loved everything. I think honestly, my favorite thing that we got was the fresh green beans. Oh. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> they were seriously so good. And I was eating it and I'm like, these are really unique. Like what is this seasoning? It looks like maybe like almost finely minced mushrooms. It was like oh, a little black, different. whatever. And so I asked our, our server and he said, I don't know, actually, I'll go ask someone. So he would go back and ask because I asked, is there, is there dairy in this? <laughs> Let's go back and come back. And so he came back and he said, they're actually bean sprouts. Oh, okay. yeah. And I think they, I don't know how they season them or whatever, but then they dice them up like tiny. And so it was, yeah, bean sprouts. I never would have known, but it seemed just like another vegetable in there. So I just feel like vegetables can be so good when they're cooked and seasoned right. And I just need to learn how to make them because, you know, nobody wants like soggy green beans or like mm -hmm. canned green beans. Like these were just delicious. So they also have a really large menu with an extensive selection of pastries or, you know, dumplings, pot stickers, scallion pancakes, but they call them pastries. They're made fresh in house. They're delicious. We definitely would order those again. So next time I go, I think I'm going to try, there's a beef roll, which is a scallion pancake and then like slices of thin beef inside. Mm. Typically they have maybe like a plum sauce. So we didn't get those last time. So I'm not sure. And then also the handmade pot stickers. And I think I would totally get that sweet and sour chicken again because it was so good. Okay. I mean, do not think like Panda Express orange chicken. Like, okay. I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. It's just, it's just better. So have you been there before? I haven't, but this was on my list also to go to China yeah. Mama and I just never came around to it. So we definitely have to go back. Yes. Very good. We did order a lot. So I think our order, all of this stuff probably came to like, like 115, but 
it was a lot of food. So we had yeah, a lot to take like home. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was good. So if you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, send us a message at the perfect fight at cccolv.com. Up next, we're sharing ways to help pay for your child's sport costs and fees. Having a child in any kind of sport or athletic class can get pricey. You not only pay for classes or training, but there's also special clothing, equipment, shoes, etc. And as your child grows, so do the expenses of these items. I remember when I was younger, uh, my dad put me and my brother into Taekwondo and we had our uniforms, our belts, our gloves, mouth guards, mats, training, like the things Mm -hmm. just went on and on. And as a child, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I'm just like, yeah, we're just, we're going to Taekwondo and we need this stuff, right? But now as an adult, I look back and I remember when I tried to put my my kids myself um, and, you know, I've got all my kids, right? But all of this stuff added up. I remember I signed them up through a Groupon, which was a deal. But then when it was time for them to move up a belt, you know, even moving up a belt, that's an added expense. And so as a parent or somebody who's putting somebody into classes, you start to think about all of these things and, um, you know, where's this money going to come from? Um, Shannon, you have kids that are mm-hmm. in sports and like, uh, what is it, soccer, volleyball, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah, what this is ringing true for me. Like I, I saw this video because once you engage with a few sport parent Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, accounts, you see a bunch of them and it was this little kid, probably like, I don't know, eight or nine, walking up to his his uh, turn at bat for baseball. Mm. And it was like, just my kid with his $500 bat off to strike out again, <laughs> oh. you know, because they're just like itty bitty. But everyone has like all this equipment, yes. all the bags and all the things. You can really get sucked into thinking like, OK, I have to spend this money to help them, you know, become whoever they want to become with the sports. But I think that so many things are out there to help offset it. And I don't know if you're going to touch on this, but there's so many places that sell gently used sporting equipment. Okay. And even shoes. We've bought uh, volleyball and a lot of kids wear basketball shoes for volleyball now. Okay. And so we would go on like offer up or other places and mm-hmm. they would have someone mm-hmm. who's like, you know what? These just didn't fit me, but I can't return them anymore that makes sense. or whatever. And yeah. so they were like brand new shoes that would have been hundreds of dollars on the Nike website or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we'll get creative. Like, especially when our kids are little, I'm like, I'm not buying you the expensive cleats. I'm buying you the Walmart cleats. And so yeah. you figure out if you actually like soccer mm-hmm. and I will always do like a rec level or a, you know, the city YMCA, yes. something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Like we tried gymnastics there first. We tried soccer there first. We did, you know, volleyball. We're doing the NYS league. Like we're not jumping straight into we do club sports now for some older kids. They've because just we've found done that they yes. like the sport yes. and they're invested in it. Because we found we didn't want to do ballet. We didn't want to do swimming. We didn't want to do soccer for one of my daughters. Yeah. She refused to take the field. If I had paid a lot of money, I would have been like even more upset that she yeah. didn't want to do it. Almost kind of forcing your kid like, no, we yes. invested all this money. You're going to stay in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So start, your kid isn't going to be great at all the things nope. and just... Yeah. Do the group on, do the, do the deal, do the one free session at the, you know, whatever place, do exactly. that first before you commit to all this. So that would be my, yes. Yeah. So my we, that's why we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. How do you fund your child's athletic pursuits mm-hmm. without growing broke? Because you can. <laughs> so the, these are some tips and these are some great ones that you brought up because I did not have those on the list. Okay, so good. those are great. Another way to help um, fund your child's athletic pursuits is to get individual sponsors. So think of your friends, your relatives. Um, I've definitely reached out to my, my dad so their granddad to help with um, paying for you know all of these things that they wanted to do sometimes people are willing to donate towards a goal so for example I can go on to like let's just say Facebook or something and I could say Violet needs to raise a hundred dollars to attend soccer camp you know if you put a specific amount and a specific goal um, depending on the child's age too this probably comes into play you know maybe friends or family will be more willing to donate towards a specific um, goal in mind. So that's one way to do it. 
So another way is to do um, local businesses as sponsors. A lot of kids when they're in middle school and high school and things like that, at the beginning of the year, they'll be like, you know, go out to local businesses, see if they'll sponsor $100 to get into an ad or something like that. I know we've done it for like financial education. Schools that we sponsor for financial education will sponsor the team's football players or something for the for the season if we're sponsoring them for financial education as well. Things like that. So um, if you have a friend, friend of the family, or maybe there's a local business that you go to all the time, maybe, you know, reach out to them and see, are they willing to sponsor XYZ to get your kid sponsored for the year for the, whatever the school trip might be or whatever um, material that they're needing to do. Another thing is fundraising. This one, I remember, you know, it wasn't sports specific, but it was when I was in band, same type of thing. Mm-hmm. We would sell like chocolates and things like that in order to reach um, this goal to get to a festival or something like that. I'm sure, you know, uh, you could do the same thing for a sports uh, team. You could sell cookies, cakes, handmade goods, different things like that, um, something more organized to raise additional funds. Um, people sometimes will feel better if they're getting something back in return um, than just handing over the money. Another idea is to get to work. So if your child is older, they can do extra chores um, around the house to get extra allowance, or maybe they can even get like a part-time or a summer job helping out with neighbors for extra cash, things like that. Shannon, for your kids, I know you mentioned going to getting like maybe things that are um, slightly used. Are there any of these that you've done or any other um, additional ones that you would add to the list? Yeah, sometimes the kids' teams will have a fundraiser, but lately it feels like it's just like, text and beg your family for money (laughs) (laughs) is the fundraiser. And I'm kind of like, well, I'd almost sometimes rather do that than get the cookie dough or get the wrapping paper or whatever that they're doing. Like they they did a Scentsy fundraiser. They did a swap meet kind of a thing where Mm -hmm. everyone brought stuff that they wanted to donate. But then it was like, oh my gosh, we have to set up the swap meet, bring all the stuff, categorize it, tag it. It was a lot of work. And I think sometimes all of the funds don't go towards, you know, you got to, some of it has to go towards the good too. So with those ones where you text and ask for money, those companies take 20% or something of the amount you raise. So what we did is we did have people sponsor um, and do a program. Mm. So if you had, even you could even do a shout out to your kids. So if I'm going to spend the $300 for the high school sports, for example, anyway, then do it as a program ad. And that 300 goes directly to the school instead of 300 through the texting campaign. Cause okay. it would take the 20%. Yeah. So I was like pushing that to say, Hey, don't do that one. Do over here. Yeah, or like, that'd be really strategic. Yeah. Or do you have a friend who has a business? Like let them do that and then we'll give them a program. I think the other thing too is we have set aside, we know how much a lot of these sport fees are going to be. And so we've divided that up through the calendar year Mm. and every single paycheck we're putting in a special, you know, I've talked about having like the multiple accounts where we have like, this is for this child. And then in that account, we're saying, okay, this bucket is for sports, this bucket is for clothes, this, but whatever. And so when it comes time to pay that, pay that volleyball fee that Mm kind of hurts when you have to (laughs) dish out that money we have set it aside and it doesn't feel so bad as of trying to come up with yeah that amount at first so if you if you know you're going to do it figure out the total roughly and then just start putting that in every month that has really helped us i mean we do have our kids do you know chores and things but that's mostly for their expenses and we do set aside our kids love shoes and so we say you have this much money we will buy you this m- this many pairs of shoes okay you're not getting more and that sounds spoiled they are spoiled but like you're not going to just get a new thing for every season yeah it's like a schedule that Mm -hmm. we're trying to keep them on because they if they had their way they'd be like i need a new yeah everything exactly every Every year so just setting expectations at early like you get this Mm -hmm. i think it'd be good too and helpful for parents that are just getting into the game to probably speak with other parents that are already doing it too to kind of get an idea of what those expenses will really look like because sometimes I think you might even start something on on the group on for example and not realize you know what all is mm-hmm. fully involved so do a little bit of research in advance oh, figure out thing I thought yeah of. sorry so friends that like know us know kind of what sports we're in and mm. so they'll they've reached out to say hey my kids are a little like do you have any of those soccer cleats? Oh, smart. Or those shin guards? Because the shin guards fit their little shins only so long, and mm-hmm. then they, you know, they grow out of them. So, I will set aside some of those sporting items uh-huh. and not just give them to the donation bin, but be like, hey, I have. I know these friends have said 
can we get sort of your, yeah. cause they really don't, don't wear them that long. As, no, kids are know. constantly growing. Yeah. yeah. My mm-hmm. older kids who aren't growing as much, like they're actually wearing out their soccer cleats now like mm-hmm. they need they're actually using them long enough but yeah the little ones it's like yeah i wore these for eight weeks yeah and then by yeah. the time the next season comes around they don't fit so yeah ask your friends be like hey your kids are in i don't know lacrosse we're looking mm-hmm. at lacrosse do you have anything for that before you go spend the money on new stuff exactly i like it so all in all sports can be expensive especially once your child gets to a competitive level but you can look at a variety of different ways to keep them active without going into debt just do some research now we're going to take a break to hear from our sponsor cccu has a bonus for you high five it's five percent interest on a bonus checking account only available at clark county credit union that's five percent on your money and it's just one more benefit of membership at clark county credit union isn't it time for you to join anyone can be a member because if somebody's making money off your checking account shouldn't it be you open a bonus checking account today and start earning your five percent only at cccu funds privately insured by american share insurance So next up is our future self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. And every fifth episode, as you know, we invite a guest to join us on our show. And for our very special 100th episode, we're happy to welcome Coach Fran Flory of the Las Vegas Thrill. The Las Vegas Thrill is the first professional volleyball team in Las Vegas and just finished up their inaugural season in May. And Clark County Credit Union was proud to be one of their very first sponsors. Welcome, Coach Fran. Thank you so much for having me. It's amazing. Um, What you guys have already done for our franchise is incredible. And, uh, you know, the thrill is thrilled to be part (laughs) uh, of the Vegas community and part of the Pro Volleyball Federation. I'm a longtime coach, uh, retired from college coaching after 35 years of college coaching, got a call from Ruben Herrera, who runs our, is the president of the Thrill, and said, hey, Fran, come be part of this. Awesome. Um, Yeah, pretty amazing. And so uh, excited to be part of it, starting professional volleyball in the United States for women for the very first time. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, incredible opportunity. And you were like, uh, Vegas, do I want to live in Vegas? Like, what did you think about that when you first heard? Well, you know, Vegas has a long standing tradition with volleyball. They have hosted tons of junior volleyball championships. As a matter of fact, they're the host of the USA Volleyball Junior Championships in July here right. at the convention mm-hmm. center. Oh. Huge event. We come in and out as a college coach for 30 plus years. We were in Vegas every single year. And I have to say, I wasn't sure because we were all <laughs> over Vegas and, and, you know, uh, we decided Hey, let's come look at it. Ruben was was adamant. Come see what we're really about. We're not all just about the strip. We're not all about that. This is an incredible community, and it has been absolutely that and more. Uh, the community has adopted us. We're part of. Every, we're recognized anywhere, everywhere. We're. It's just. It's just mm-hmm. amazing to be part of. Honestly, that's amazing because I feel like too. There's so many stereotypes about Las Vegas, but like you said, like even driving here to our branches today, it was like, oh, this is a different part of town. Yeah. This isn't what you expect. And mm-hmm. we have a branch out in Henderson where you guys practice, and just part of the community. And so we've been so pleased to be partnered with you guys because it's like we're local. You guys are local. We're so excited to be mm-hmm. just supporting women in sports and you know you guys were able to and our members are enjoying it they're loving being a part of something new and something fresh for women and yeah so yeah i think we we sold out the tickets that we had within minutes yeah it was like four minutes and gone (laughs) yeah literally four minutes that's incredible Mm -hmm. yeah our contact kirk over there the thrill was like uh, what'd you just do? I'm like, we sent an email. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it had our, our product has value. People mm-hmm. want to be part. It's an exciting entertainment event. It's not just about volleyball. Mm-hmm. It's, it has value and the vibe in the building is really cool. You guys have been yeah, there. You yes, know what it's very, about. Yeah. Very yeah. fun. So Fran, you guys, like we said, have been so generous with your time. You've given clinics to different volleyball groups, high schools, clubs, you've been out there in the community. I think that there's so much that we can learn for ourselves from how you fostered that culture on your team. How do you take that um, teamwork and collaboration among your players and maybe apply it to a workplace team or even um, I could say even like a family or, you mm-hmm. know, whatever group you're trying to have that kind of an environment, like what, what advice would you give us? Well, you know, I think first and foremost, you know, you have to know where you're going. You know, you have to have a goal and a common goal and you have to all be, you know, to use the analogy, rowing the boat in the same direction. And if you have one person that's not doing their share or maybe even somebody that's kind of rowing the different direction, then, 
you know, you're not going to reach. Or not rowing at all. Or not, <laughs> no, yeah, or not rowing at all. Just on the ride. To, yeah, uh, just along for the ride, right? Um, then you're going to shortchange the level of success you can experience. And, and for us, you know, starting this new, we had to give everybody a voice. We, you know, we had 36-year-olds to 22-year-olds. Mm. Now, the 22-year-olds were young and didn't really know what was mm-hmm. going on. But we had some seasoned veterans mm-hmm. who have played internationally overseas, played in, in the Olympics, Alicia Glass Childress. So we used those people to help lead. Like the, the value of the members is of the team or the group or the organization has to be understood and has to be used. And, and we did a really, really good job, I think, of that, of allowing every voice to matter, every voice to count, and allowing even the 22-year-olds who were just out of college and didn't know anything about what this was about to have their share of input because, again, we got to all be rowing in the same mm-hmm. direction. Well, and you had the 22-year-olds on the court, on the floor. You know, they were some of your starters, and you had to merge those different personalities and dynamics. But I, I will say they look like they're having fun. Like, even on the sidelines, they're dancing, mm-hmm. they're doing fun cheers. They're, they look like they all were, from my perspective, like really gelling as a team. So that says a lot about you as a coach, I think. So, well, yeah. thank you. We, we worked real hard to kind of develop that collaboration and make sure that everybody understood. And it was hard to start. You know, it's mm-hmm. hard to merge that age group mm-hmm. and, and coming from all different programs and experiences to get them. It took us about half the season to get that. And then once we got it, you're right. The sideline became energetic mm-hmm. and fun and uh, the product on the court, our play got better and better as we went through the year. I love that. So I think for our listeners, maybe somebody who's like aspirations to kind of be in a role similar to yourself, what are some of the leadership leadership skills that you think you've developed as a coach and how have you applied them in your role throughout the years? I think first and foremost, you have to know what you stand for and what you're about. Okay. Um, if you know yourself well enough to know your blind spots, right? We mm-hmm. all have blind spots to know your strengths and then supplement that with people that are going to take care of those blind spots and gonna, you have to have the right team around you. Nobody in this world could do it by themselves. You know, okay. you know, there's all type of different leaderships, and I think young players think young people um, that step into leadership roles sometimes thinks that's a dictatorship. Like I'm in charge mm-hmm. and tell everybody what to do. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, I am the type of leader that every voice matters. It doesn't matter where you are in the organization. Every voice has to matter. Um, but if you don't understand yourself well enough then I think those are the people that run into trouble because, you know, they aren't understanding how they're coming off to the people that they're leading. You know, my mother was a great leader. She passed away in in, uh, November, but she led from behind. She was Mm -hmm. ever present and she would always push you into situations that you didn't think you could do. Okay. But she would just push and guide and kind of show you the way without standing in front of you at all. So there's so many different ways to lead. I think you have to know yourself well enough to understand what type of leader you actually can be most effective as. Love that. And I think I would imagine you have to have some thick skin to be a coach at the college level and a professional level. And so if you know what you stand for and what your values are, it would be easier, I'm imagining, to stick to those, right? Because when you have all the, I don't know, People are mean. <laughs> I would the criticisms yeah. and all of that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you have, to, you have to have thick skin. And you mm-hmm. have to – I think the bottom line is you have to know that you're doing the right thing. And if you know you're doing the right thing, then the criticism isn't criticism. People are going to evaluate you all the time. They're going to grade you in the classroom. They're going to judge you by wins and losses. They're going to judge you by how much money you have, right? You're judged mm-hmm. in every way, shape, or form in life. But I think – for you to understand who you are and and to be steadfast in the mission of whatever organization you're leading, that is the key. You know, if our goal is this, then nothing can take me away from stepping every, every single day, stepping one step closer to that goal for my organization. Leaders have to make the hard decisions. They have to say, hey, we're gonna go this direction and you're not gonna be part of this, mm. or hey, I'm going to go get this person because that person's going to make a big decision for me and make a big difference in my organization. And that means I have to give something somewhere else. So you can't be afraid of the hard decisions for sure as a leader. You have to be able to step into the forefront, carry the, carry the mission, and, and be strong enough to, to kind of get through the criticism. 
So one thing here at the credit union, we are always trying to stay relevant. We're looking for new opportunities. You know, we were talking about AI just recently, like, oh, all this AI discussion and how do we stay in front of that? So um, it's just all about like continuous improvement, right? We need to stay hungry. So how is your approach to that with your athletes and continuing to have improvement and advancing in the sport? Well, I think there's two phases to that. There's individual improvement and there's team improvement for us. And so the investment in your career as a professional athlete has to be day to day, Mm -hmm. if not minute to minute. And it's not just on the court. It's in every aspect of your life. And so the question I ask all staff members and all players at the end of the day, look yourself in the mirror and say, did I get better today? And did I make my team better today? And if I did that, then it was a successful day. And if I didn't do that, then I got some work to do tomorrow to catch up because that's a lost day. We all have a finite number of days in life, right? And if you'd make the most of them, then at the end you say, hey, I had a great life. And if you don't, you end with some regret. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if I just think I got to make a little bit of difference, you don't need to make a monumental difference, just a little bit of difference. I passed a few more balls, balls to the target than I did the day before, or I had a little better technique, or I had a nice hitting percentage for our sport, right? Or I made somebody else's experience in the gym better. All of those things are ways that our team can help move the needle towards success and that individually you can have an impact. Awesome, I like that. And what about, I'm sure, you know, being being an athlete, anybody who's like that invested in, in a sport, there there are highs and there are lows. How do you handle the stress and the pressure of being a coach? And how do you help your players cope with those same stresses? Well, I think anxiety and stress, in my opinion, are due to lack of preparation. Mm-hmm. If you were truly prepared, if you walk into a test as a student, and you're prepared. You're not stressed. You're prepared. Okay. You walk in and you're going to just bond. You're going to take care of it. You're going to just mm-hmm. go off on that test, right? We walk into a match. If we're truly prepared, then we know we're ready. Like we're know we're prepared. The stress comes when preparation doesn't meet expectation. Okay. So if I haven't prepared well enough, you know, there are many times during the season this year that we had a string of five matches in 11 days. I can't prepare my team well enough for every one of those matches because there's a lot that goes into preparation for matches, uh, tendencies of hitters, all kinds of things, rotations. So you got to know everything about every attacker. There's no way we can do that with five matches in 11 days. So there were matches that we weren't prepared for and we were anxious and we were stressed in. And then you just have to rely on who you are and your natural ability to get through those moments. But, you know, I think all of it to me goes back to knowing who you are and handling stress. And, and I think I've told a lot of coaches that um, have asked me about this, like, how do you handle that? I said, hey, I just take a minute, sit down, take a deep breath, mm. and remember why we're there and what we're trying to accomplish. And then somehow it just comes into vision if you let it. But you got to let it. Okay. So how do you bounce back, though, when it doesn't go well? We probably wanted to win a few more games. Everyone always wants to win more games. Talk to me about, like, what happens after – a loss yeah. because we talked about motivation to keep going. Yeah, we and were just talking about failing fast, right? It's right. okay to fail if we learn. So mm-hmm. you could take a loss as a fail, but then how do you treat that? Yeah. And, and when you fail, you succeed. And so losses are, are positives in ways and certainly negatives. When you look at our win loss percentage <laughs> at the end of the year, we wanted to win more matches and <laughs> we're in positions to win more matches and, and weren't able to execute at a high enough level to finish. But The bottom line is after you don't succeed, like what's the work ethic? How do you respond? Do you, it's all about the response. Do you respond that I'm woe is me, poor me, I didn't get the chance, my coach didn't put me in the right situation? Are you self-reflective? Are you asserting guilt or blame to others? And When you have a team that can be self-reflective and sit back and say, I could have done X, Y, and Z better. As a coach, I could have put these players in a little better situation. I could have subbed at this position. I could have put in a new server, which I should have done a couple of times, quite honestly, at the end of matches to give us a better opportunity. But again, it goes back to preparation. Like, did you earn the right to be in there in practice? Mm -hmm. Or are we really prepared for that situation? And so when you fail, You have to go back and evaluate how did we prepare, why did that preparation fail, 
And how do we adjust from there? It's not a knee-jerk reaction to, all right, we weren't good enough. It's our preparation wasn't good enough. Our process wasn't good enough. How do we adapt that and get this group into a better situation? Mm -hmm. And I like that because you're approaching it from a, it's not like I am a failure. It's what can I do to be better? And I think sometimes, especially like, you know, I have kids that are in sports now and you have a hard loss or you have something that doesn't go your way and, and they do take it personally and sometimes it, it weighs them down. And so I think approaching it like that, like, okay, what's, what should I do to prepare better? Yeah. And being honest forward. with yourself mm-hmm. about, you know, yeah. How can you improve? How can we improve as a, as a team? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even saying like, you know, I'm anxious about this. Not that like I have an issue. It's just like, this is a situation that I can handle and get through and not a personality trait or flaw Mm -hmm. in myself. It's something that can be fixed or handled differently next time. So, yeah, I, I talk a lot about response versus reaction. If you respond to something, you find a solution to whatever negative situation you're in. If you react, then you self reflect and sometimes absorb too much responsibility And that's an emotional reaction to what's Mm -hmm. happened. If you respond to it, then you allow yourself to work through the what's, the why's, the how's, and you get to a solution. So we talk a lot about response versus react. And coach came and talked to a volleyball club and I attended Mm -hmm. and she talked about that response versus reaction. Okay. And you probably like, it's taken root in the group and people will be like, are you responding? Or are you reacting? You know, what are you doing? Oh, and they love that you said they could have snacks. Oh. <laughs> and nutrition's important. Yeah. They're like, we need to have nutrition between our, our matches because a lot of times they're like, oh, we don't want to do this or do that to get weighed down for our games. But well, Coach Fran said, yeah, Coach Fran said, <laughs> hey, I'm not the I'm not the end all be all, but that is a true statement. Yeah, it's a true statement. Like, Rice Krispie treats. Yes, we didn't have that. So. Yeah. This has really been great, Coach Fran. Thank you so much for joining us, giving us all the great leadership advice. Before you leave, though, we'd like to ask all of our guests two questions. So the first question we would like to ask is, what piece of financial advice would you give to someone that they can implement today to improve their finances for their future self? You know, I'm a retired person, and Mm -hmm. so saving for the future is important. But I'm going to tell you, I I was in a car with a, a gentleman that Uh, was driving me somewhere and we were talking about finances and stuff. And he said, you know, he said, you know, Fran, he said, I live pretty good. And every, every increase I got in salary, I just put that in the bank. Mm. There was no reason for me to live any differently because I was happy and I was fine. And now that I've put all those increases in pay Mm -hmm. and salary and additional funds that I was able to gain, I'm really set in retirement. Oh, nice. And I don't need to do anything. He said, I think oftentimes we get a promotion and we get a big increase in salary and we decide, oh, I I need a bigger house, a better car. And the question I would ask is, are you happy where you are? Do you have what you need? And if you do, save that for the future because as a retiree, you're going to be really happy if you have it and really scared if you don't. What did we just call that on a previous episode? Lifestyle creep? Yes, we did. So yeah, you Mm -hmm. you let that raise change your lifestyle each time. And then what a wise driver you had. He was incredible. incredible. And I thought, you know what? I was a little older. I said, I wish I would (laughs) have. I did, but I wish I would have. I appreciate a lot of people. So yeah, if you're listening out there, Mm -hmm. you heard it. You know, yeah, you don't have to always adjust just because you get that increase. Are you happy? Then maybe just save that extra. Yeah, Yeah, you have what you need. Well, I know you're on the road a lot, but your your home base has been in Henderson. Mm-hmm. Were you able to try any of our local amazing restaurants? Since we do talk about food here on the podcast. And if there was a restaurant you liked, what did you like to order when, when you guys went there? Well, I tell you, there's a little spot that's right up hori- West Horizon Ridge from our practice mm-hmm. facility, and it's called Chef's Roma. Okay. It's a little Italian place in a strip mall, and we have lived there. Oh. It has the homemade pasta. Go there. Uh, It's really, really good. We are there all the time, uh, it seems. My favorite dish there has to be, I I mean, I changed the pasta because it's all so good. Uh, It's homemade (laughs) and it's great, but I I love fettuccine. So I would have to Mm. go with shrimp fettuccine. I'm a Louisiana girl, so, you know, any seafood is good stuff for me. So uh, that's been incredible. There's so many great places, though, but that's probably the place we frequent the most. All right, awesome. We'll have to try that one. I haven't been there yet. either. Yeah, Henderson... You know, do you know we refer to it as Hinder Tucky sometimes? Oh, no, I have, <laughs> have not you heard, heard that. that? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Because it feels so far away from other parts of town. But 
we do have our, our branches out there. So we, of course, venture out to Henderson. But um, I did want to remind our listeners that if you want to continue supporting the Thrill, even in the off season, we do have the Thrill debit card, which is exclusive here to Clark County Credit Union. You can only get it here. Open up a checking account and you can uh, every single tap or swipe of your card, show your support for the Vegas Thrill. So thank you again, Coach, for being here. Yes, thank and you. Being so generous with your time. Well, thank you for having me. And nobody else in the league has this debit card. So let's get out and (laughs) grab them because that's pretty special for us. That's right. Go thrill. (laughs) We just want to take a minute to thank everyone for listening and being part of the Perfect Bite community. We are going to be taking a break after episode 100. But in the meantime, feel free to keep sending us your topic ideas or food recommendations to theperfectbite at ccculb.com. Have a great summer. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.